good stuff. You know, I've been living in Japan for almost three years now. Time really flies. And within those three years, I've somehow managed to work in five different English teaching jobs. I've worked in kindergartens, elementary schools, junior high schools, cram schools, conversation schools for adults, you name it, almost everything. So I figured, what the hell, like maybe I should make a video and, and talk about what it's like teaching in Japan. Yeah, living in Japan. It's always been a dream of mine. Cheap izakayas, delicious sushi, beautiful nature, countless of game centers and arcades, beautiful beaches, and of course, my personal favorite, maid cafes. <sighs> the first question I usually get asked is, what do I need to become an English teacher in Japan? Well, to be honest, there's really only two things you need. The first is you need to be able to speak English, obviously, but you don't have to be a native speaker. And the second thing is you need to have a pulse. Yes, if you can speak English and you have a pulse, Congratulations, you are more than qualified to teach English in Japan. <laughs> anyway, where was I? Ah, my first teaching job. It was in a kindergarten, and it lasted for one day. I was drinking in a bar one night when I randomly got a text message from a friend of a friend asking if I could be a substitute teacher at a kindergarten. I thought to myself, sure, why not? What's the worst that could happen? My anus was violated that day. For some reason, Japanese boys think it's funny to play this game where they put their hands and fingers like this and then sneak up behind some poor unsuspecting person and then proceed to ram their fingers up their ring hole. They call it kancho. This should be the very first thing teachers are warned about when they come to Japan. I hadn't even started teaching my first lesson. I had my back turned to the students as I was preparing my materials on my merry way and next second I felt this rod go right up my ass. I turned around and I saw this cheeky four-year-old little rascal kid grinning at me from ear to ear. I wasn't even sure what had happened. All I knew is that I needed to sit on something cold. It wasn't until a couple of weeks later when I started my next teaching job that I learned about this kancho thing. Anyway, kindergarten is all about ABCs, singing, dancing, storytelling, you know, stuff like that. It was an interesting experience, but not my cup of tea. By the end of the day, I felt like Arnold Schwarzenegger after his first day in the movie Kindergarten Cop. Phew. <sighs> Fortunately, I was only substitute for one day and never again. My next job was with one of the most famous English teaching companies in Japan, Nova. You might have heard of them. They're pretty famous and it's for all the wrong reasons. But to be fair, most of their problems happened about a decade ago. There are Novas all over Japan and they're probably, uh, well not the best, but one of the, the best gateways for you to move to Japan, live in Japan and work with a, I guess, steady kind of job. They'll set you up with an apartment, uh, they'll organise your flights, 
maybe. I don't know, don't quote me on that. But yeah, they'll set you up with your visa and everything you need to live here. However, you might not get to choose where you live. They're probably going to put you where they need you. So if you're hoping to get into Tokyo or somewhere happening, keep your fingers crossed. Nova is a place for adults and kids to learn English. Uh, you'll get kids as young as three and you'll get adults that could be as old as a hundred, or at least they look that old. Why do they study? Well, the adults are studying because it's for a hobby or for business purposes, or they just want to make friends or looking for a boyfriend or girlfriend. It's true. And kids are studying there for extra studies outside of their normal school. Now you're probably wondering what the hell you teach in the class. Well, lessons go for 40 minutes and you'll either do group lessons with up to, I think, five adult students or, or eight kids, or you can do private lessons. And they have these textbooks which you are supposed to teach from. And the good news is that you can pick any lesson you want from the textbook. So you can find something that appeals to you and you think the student might enjoy and, and just teach that for 40 minutes. But some of these lessons, like, I don't know why the hell they are in the textbook. Like, take this one for example, lesson 10. It's teaching the student how to send a fax in English. Oh, the first time I saw that, I just laughed and thought, it's ridiculous. I mean, who the hell still uses a fax machine in this day and age? Well, in Japan, everyone. Nova have kinder lessons as well, and they are total chaos. They don't train you for it either. They just kind of throw you in there and say, good luck, do your best. Man, what a nightmare. I'm suddenly having all these flashbacks. Three and four year old kids running around, jumping on tables, screaming, beating each other up, pissing their pants, drawing with crayons all over the floor and wall and you. It's just a nightmare. And you know what the worst part is? The parents are sitting right outside in the lobby. They can hear everything. So I turn on the music and play heads, shoulders, knees and toes to try and drown out the noise. But it doesn't work because kids then run out of the classroom up and down the hallway screaming and shouting. Meanwhile, there's adult lessons happening everywhere. I can't take it. I barely had many kinder lessons, but there were other teachers that had it a lot worse than me. Like, I'm talking seven of their eight lessons every day were kids' classes. And we had to go to Toriki Zoku every Saturday night to drown our sorrows away. Beer solved everything. Speaking of students, you can get some really, really funny and interesting people and it doesn't feel like work when you have people like that. But on the other flip side, oh man, you can get some real oddballs. Like for example, I had this one guy who took my lesson every week and every lesson, all he wanted to talk about was, was sex and learn dirty words. And I had another student and he said something so twisted and completely off topic to what the lesson was about. I felt uneasy and actually a little bit scared of him. And there's even one female Nova teacher who got horrifically murdered by some nutcase. This is true. Look it up. Ah, Nova. It was an interesting ride. Good experience. Other companies like Nova are GABA, Aon, ECC. So there's other ones you can choose from. There's plenty out there. Yeah. Nova. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Mr. Bones. 
I had been working at Nova for about 11 months, and by now, COVID-19 had well and truly set in. So many teachers were leaving Japan and going back to their home country, and there were no teachers able to come back in to replace them, you know, because of the whole travel ban. So suddenly, there were hundreds of jobs becoming available and no teachers to fill them. I could sense this great opportunity to change direction and move into the world of ALT. You know, assistant language teacher at elementary school. So, I said farewell to Nova and entered a whole nother world of teaching. When you work for a school, you can either be hired by the school directly, or you can go through a company that acts kind of like a bridge between you and the school. And these companies include Borderlink, Joytalk, Interac, Heart, there's a lot of them. And they will set you up with flights, visas, your apartment, banking, phone, they'll talk to the school for you, everything. So if you don't like the idea of teaching adults at places like Nova, and you'd prefer to work as an ALT, well, this could be more for you. And you don't have to be a native speaker as well. There are teachers from all over the world, all continents. Yeah, let's talk about ALT. The company I got a contract with was called Borderlink, and they assigned me to three elementary schools in the district next to where I live. Now, in Japan, the new school year starts in April, and I'm starting in September. That's right, I'm coming in mid-year to replace an ALT who suddenly quit. I would not recommend ever doing this if you have never worked as an ALT before, because coming in mid-year, it felt like I was thrown in the deep end. I have no idea what I'm doing. Now, before I actually started teaching in the schools, they had me attend a two-day training course. And I can tell you, training was pretty much non-existent because the trainer, he spent more time talking about the movie Tenet than he did preparing me for what lay ahead in the classroom. In fact, the only thing he equipped me with were the words, fake it till you make it. That's right, I'm not kidding. That's all I have written in my notebook. Fake it till you make it. I am about to go into three Japanese elementary schools with nothing but fake it till you make it to go by. <sighs> Holy shit. I remember leaving the training center thinking to myself, what the fuck am I supposed to teach? The trainer also gave me this big bag full of textbooks with no explanation of what was in them or what I should do with them. <laughs> I remember on my very first day of school, I was so nervous. I went in extra early and made myself a cup of coffee. I was so nervous I couldn't even put the coffee into my cup. I dumped it all over the table. My hands were shaking uncontrollably. I felt sick in the stomach. Here I am in a Japanese elementary school. No idea what I'm doing. It's already halfway through the school year. Where in the textbook are we even up to? What classes do I go to? And where is the classroom? Who am I teaching with? Do they speak English? Do they have a lesson prepared? Am I supposed to have a lesson prepared? As an ALT in elementary schools, you are always working with the homeroom teacher, or at least someone else. You're never in the classroom by yourself. God, that'd be horrible. But anyway, sometimes the homeroom teachers can't speak any English, and they expect you to just do everything yourself. And sometimes they'll leave the classroom and leave you there with 40 kids just staring up at you. And what do I do? <laughs> well, of course, now I know, but back then I didn't. So they call it T1 and T2 teaching. 
T1 is the teacher who is the leader of the class. Usually they would prepare the lesson, they explain the grammar, the language, they're running the show. And T2 is just there as like a, a wingman or assistant, I guess you could say. And my company said to me that I am going to be T1 in all three schools. <laughs> Have mercy. Yeah, that's the only negative I have to say about working in an elementary school, because after that, I had a total blast. The kids see you as like a celebrity or an, an idol, I guess. Uh, they get so excited every time you walk into the classroom. And at lunchtime, when I walked out into the playground, kids came running up to me and grabbed my arm. Spike Sensei! Spike Sensei! And they wanted me to join, join their play group and play dodgeball or basketball or handball, soccer, everything. Every day I tried to play with a different grade and, and do different things. Having said that, it really made me realise that I'm not young anymore. Because there was one particular school and every morning before classes, uh, the kids would do these 50 metre sprint running races in the playground. And I thought to myself, yeah, I'm going to join in. I'm going to race these kids and kick their ass. <laughs> no, it was me getting my ass kicked. I lost to grade five girls in a running race. I'm not even kidding. And in the very next race after that, racing against grade four boys, I pulled my hamstring. No shit. I pulled a hammy running against grade four kids. And then I had to hobble off to the nurse's office with my tail between my legs. So embarrassing. <laughs> it's probably worth mentioning that as an ALT, you might only teach one, two, three, four lessons in a day, sometimes none, sometimes all six, but you really do have a lot of spare time on your hands. Uh, there were days where I would have two classes and by 11 o'clock I finished everything I needed to do for the day and I had everything prepared for the next day. So I had five hours to kill and do whatever. And that was usually time I would study Japanese or I would join another class and watch the kids do science or, or PE. That was always fun. And you would normally eat the school lunches with kids, but because of COVID I wasn't allowed to do that. And as for the school lunches, yes, uh, mm. why is it always a brown colour? And sometimes I don't even know what I'm eating. Oh. Kids clean their own school too. So there's no janitor, there's no cleaner. For 15 minutes every day, everyone has to clean. So you should probably help out too. If the kids and principal and teachers see you cleaning, you'll win big points. A lot of the kids I taught had never seen blue eyes before, and they would get right up in my face and just stare at me and say, Mega oi! And if you have hairy arms, like me, get ready to have that rubbed a lot. And if you have a beer belly, like me, that's going to get padded. And be prepared for a lot of junkin' because you'll be playing rock, paper, scissors about 50 times a day. What do you teach? Well, basically it's a lot of this. What color do you like? What color do you like? I like red. I like blue. I like red and blue. The school year finished in March and at about the same time a couple of my YouTube videos started to explode. The adult video bar hit the algorithm and suddenly went up to a million views. I don't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> anyway, suddenly I was making more money in a week from my YouTube video than I was teaching. I had 
stars in my eyes. My head was in the clouds. I thought, you know what? I've made it. I'm a YouTuber now. So I figured I want to move into a more full-time YouTube role and just do a bit of part-time teaching on the side. So I left my elementary teaching job and got a job with another company that teaches like English conversation with adults, kind of similar to Nova. They're called OneCoin English and they were located right next to Akihabara, my favorite place in the world. So I thought this is perfect. Everything is coming up spike. Well, so I thought. Des, 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 spike des, pen des, book des. All right, now I can update my resume. Fluent in Japanese. One Coin English is a lot like Nova, but in some ways they're nothing like Nova. Because take for example, uh, Nova, you have to wear a, a suit to work and cover up any tattoos or piercings that you might have. Whereas OneCoin English allow you to wear whatever you want. They encourage you to show your personality and uniqueness. Yeah, the more different you are, the more likely you are to get a job there. I don't know why they employed me. Anyway, non-native speakers made up almost the majority of the, the teachers who work there um, because OneCoin really prides itself on their cultural diversity. It allows students the opportunity to meet people from all over the world and hear different accents. It's called OneCoin English because students only have to pay one coin or 500 yen to take a lesson. So cheap. About 80% of the students are female, typically women in their 20s and 30s. It wasn't uncommon for me to have, say, 14 or 15 students in a day, and maybe 12, 13, or all of them were, were girls. And absolutely everybody I taught, male and female, invited me to drink alcohol with them after I finished work. The company actually encourages that. That's one thing that sets it apart from Nova, that have a strict policy about meeting with students. One coin... Oh my god. Damn it. What was I talking about? Ah, oh, right, drinking. Drinking parties. Yeah, every month, um, OneCoin put on like gatherings or events and students and teachers are allowed to gather together and, and drink and talk and, and party. But of course, because of COVID-19, I was not given any chance to enjoy this. And that really bummed me out. <sighs> Sorry, I'm out of breath running up and down stairs. <laughs> I really got along well with the teachers and managers and staff that work there. The students were all great too. Uh, generally, OneCoin want you to spend 50% of the lesson teaching the textbook that they have and then the other 50% of the lesson is spent doing conversation practice and the textbook uh, it wasn't the greatest and a lot of the students complained as well they didn't want to do the textbook they just want to 
use the English that they already have because they have no opportunity to speak English in their day-to-day -day lives. And they say to me, like, we already know the grammar in this textbook because we learnt it in junior high school. And, well, now I know that that's true. I no longer work for OneCoin English. I had to give it up. And the reason being is that the salary is so bad. They might as well have paid me in magic beans. It was, without a doubt, the worst paying job in my entire life. This is no exaggeration. I earned more money when I was a 14 year old boy walking around a football stadium selling bottles of coca-cola to fans <sighs> yeah brisbane bears games at the gabba back in the 90s that was fun now nathan buckley now he might just about kick this from 53 meters nathan buckley let's go and he has kicked the beauty by all reports i've heard that the salary is the number one reason for teachers leaving why is it so bad you're probably thinking well Imagine this, typically you might work from say 1pm to 10pm and if a student doesn't book a one hour slot in that time, you don't get paid and this situation happened to some teachers occasionally where they would have a lesson at one o'clock when they started for one hour and then absolutely nothing until 9 p.m. at night, the final slot, and they had another one hour lesson. So basically you're doing two lessons, spending the entire day at work and you're walking away with $25 in your pocket. That's about $2.50 an hour. When I took the job at OneCoin, I, I knew the pay was going to be bad. But I didn't care because I was still floating on air from my sudden YouTube success. <laughs> well, that chapter of my life ended all too quickly. The algorithm giveth, the algorithm taketh away. Yeah, I, I, I had to, to leave and, and quickly because I was just bleeding too much money by staying there. No matter how much I tried to get bookings it just didn't cut it unfortunately so yeah one coin I was sorry to go I really enjoyed that job a lot so now I got my fifth job and I'm back in the world of ALT again this time with a new company and this time I'm working in junior high schools I have to say that working in a junior high school right now, this is easily the best job I've ever had since I came to Japan. Maybe even my whole life. I had a really memorable first day on the job too. I accidentally went to the wrong school. You see, a lot of the schools in Japan have really similar names or just a slight variation. So I typed in what I thought was my school on Google Maps, went there, Monday morning, 8 o'clock, went inside, walked around, said good morning to all the teachers and students. And after about five minutes, it started to occur to me that I don't actually belong here. I'm in the wrong school. Jeez, that was embarrassing. I love how there is a vending machine right outside my school selling Japanese sake. And outside my other school that I go to, there's another one that sells beer. No ID required. There is no way you would ever get away with this having a beer vending machine outside a high school in Australia. Can you imagine? As for the actual teaching part, I guess your primary function, your purpose, is to be a human tape recorder. Yeah, that's no exaggeration. You're going to be doing a lot of repeat after me kind of drills, listening, reading kind of stuff. It might sound a bit boring, but you're not bound to do just that by any means. You can definitely get more proactive and be more involved with the lesson planning and activities. And I found that the students 
enjoyed my classes a lot more, if I was you know, more involved. I really find that junior high schools are much more my pace compared to working at elementary schools and kinders. Yeah, junior high school requires a lot less energy, that's for sure. And the language you teach is a little bit more interesting than I like apples. As for the students, yeah, they're all really great. And I really enjoyed like, talking with them and hearing about their future dreams and discussing like their hobbies and interests. Yeah, it's fun. They were really interested in me too, just because you don't really get much of an opportunity to talk with an Australian guy. <laughs> One of my friends asked me if there were any bad students or, you know, like troublemakers. And the answer is no. There really isn't. You might occasionally get some students who don't want to study, don't take out their textbook and try to uh, distract their friend sitting next to them by talking. But that's the extent of it. And even if you do have one troublemaker, it's not your duty to discipline them. Yeah, that's the Japanese teacher's job. Yeah, it's such a different contrast to Australian schools. Back in my day, kids are throwing erasers across the room. There's playground fights, spitballs, chewing gum, graffiti, writing notes and passing them around. Wow, Japan. Good country. You know what I really love about working in elementary schools and junior high schools? The cards and gifts and drawings students give to me, like either during the lesson or after class or at the end of the year as well. Yeah, it's really thoughtful and, and kind and sweet. Like I've got so much like origami. Like, I can't bear to throw these away. I've got a big box. I collect all this stuff. So I've got lots of origami and anime drawings and things. And actually just yesterday I was substituting at an elementary school just for one day. And I must have made one hell of an impression because at the end of the day, all of the students were coming up to me and asking for my autograph. I was signing everything. They were giving me their pencil cases, textbooks, uh, uh, their hats, just random pieces of paper. One kid took his shoe off and gave it to me and wanted me to sign it. Okay, here you are. He was really chuffed. I don't know how his mum's gonna feel. Anyway, I really felt like a celebrity that day. And at the end of the school year, usually the class will make a big card and everyone will write a message and, and sign it. Oh, man, that's the highlight for me. Like, check this out. This is from last year when I was working at elementary school and these kids made this giant Nintendo Switch. And cats and, and mushrooms here and all sorts of boxes and messages. They went to a lot of effort. Yeah, that's so good. And this year, I just finished working at a junior high school and this school was easily the best school I've ever worked at. The students were great, they were funny and talkative. I really didn't want to have to, to finish at that school, but I did. Anyway, they all wrote these cards for me with, with really funny messages. And I have to show you some of them, because they're great. Like, for example, uh, this one, yeah. Listen to this. Your English class is very interesting. I enjoy it. Also, your muscles is very nice. I don't forget you and bicep. Signed, Mr. Muscle. Thank you, Mr. Muscle. I'll never forget you. He was really funny. Um, <laughs> on the very first lesson I taught, I had to do my own self-introduction. And in my introduction, part of it was showing a video of Australian animals. And one of the videos, the kangaroos were fighting each other. And I pointed out that kangaroos have big muscles. And suddenly a student starts shouting, muscle, muscle. I'm like, who said that? And I found this guy and discovered that he loves muscles. So after that, I nicknamed him Mr. Muscle. 
hence why he signed Mr. Muscle. Yeah, so many great students. I'll show you some more. There's lots of messages saying I enjoyed your class, I want to go to Australia. Pictures of maids, because I might have mentioned that I enjoy maid cafes, they thought that was funny. Lots of I love yous. Yeah, your class made me excited. Moi moi cute. That's written a lot. Lots of made pictures and pictures of muscle guys. I want to meet you someday. Thank you very much. Moi moi cute. Thank you very much. I like you. I like you. I love you. I love you. I love you. There's a lot of I love yous. I think a lot of these are from boys. <laughs> ah, yeah, Japan. Three years already. Man, time flies. Speaking of time, this video has gone for way too long, so I'm going to wrap it up now. Thank you for watching if you stayed with me for this long. I hope you enjoyed it. As for the channel, like, I'm going to be uploading a lot of stuff. There's heaps coming. I read all of your requests and comments. Uh, try to respond if I can and I'm definitely going to give you what you're asking for and yeah if you like the video like subscribe all that stuff and thank you for watching that's it I'll see you next time <music>